Good morning, friends. This is Pastor Lori from First UMC in Kirksville, joining you for our time together that we spend on Fridays, whether you're joining me live at 9.30 in the morning or catching this sometime later on. It is good to gather with you today. We often ask the question during these times, how is it with your soul? And as we're thinking about that today, taking this time to pause and just, um, again, take that little break out of our busy weeks to think about what that is, I wanted to share a story with you this week. And um, this comes from the book that I've been reading through this summer, this n I Guess I Haven't Learned That Yet by Shauna Nequist. And I'm almost to the end of it, so we've just got a, probably a couple more snippets from this one. But the story that I wanted to share with you today. It's about how several years ago, a man heard about two young refugees in his small town. They needed temporary housing. They were teenage brothers who had come to this small town through a local relief agency. They came from worlds away, the opposite side of the globe. They spoke very little English. They were separated from their families and they didn't know anyone but each other. Their home country was in such turmoil that it was not a safe place for them to be. They needed a place to live. Um, they needed all the things that are necessary for life in this day and age. They needed driver's licenses and computer skills and language classes. They needed help even with some of the simple things like grocery shopping and getting enrolled in school. And so there was a man named Bob who volunteered. Now, he did that a little bit begrudgingly. Um, he would be the first to admit that his politics didn't quite align with the refugee cause. He was very unfamiliar with the part of the world that these two young brothers came from. He was a little apprehensive about their religious practices. But he was a dependable volunteer, and he was a person committed to practicing generosity. And so he prepared his guest room for a temporary stay for these two young men. Now this temporary stay, it extended, and he kept extending invitations for it to, for them to stay longer. He taught them how to use computers. He tracked down used computers for them. He taught them how to drive, and he put orange traffic cones in his driveway so that they could learn how to parallel park. He took them to get their driver's license and helped with the local license bureau to get them what they needed. He took them to their language classes and he helped negotiate for used cars for them. He learned about their country and their traditions and their religion. And he asked them to teach him about the foods that they missed because he wanted to learn how to fix a couple of familiar meals for them. He learned more about the immigration law and process than he had ever thought anyone could know. And you probably did not want to be on the other end of the phone when he, he called to check and see what was taking so long with that form or with that visa, because he was their advocate, their mentor, and their friend. He helped them get jobs. And as they started to make a life in this new community and started dating, they would bring their girlfriends to dinner to meet Bob. When one of the girlfriends needed to go back to her country for visa reasons, Bob went along and accompanied her and their young son. Um, he became a father figure and they became like sons and daughters to him. He talked about them with so much pride, and he became loyal to and enamored with their home countries, their traditions, their favorite foods. Their lives were changed by him, and they absolutely changed his. Now, as I kept reading through this chapter um, that she writes, the author then goes on to say, Bob was my grandpa, Robert Lawrence Berry, and he died last month just shy of his 91st birthday. In the weeks before his passing, we all shared stories about this extraordinary community that began with what was originally going to be a weekend stay. These two young men and eventually their wives and their children, all these lives were so powerfully shaped by the generosity and commitment of one man. And he'd be quick to say that they taught him more and gave him more than he ever gave them. 
And then she goes on to share that one of the interesting things about this story is that her grandpa met these young men when he was 85 years old. This incredible story with all of its rich and meaningful and transformative relationships all happened in a short window of five years. Her grandpa had been recently widowed and he was looking for something to fill the hours of the day. And that's how it started. He just wanted to help a little to use what he had, which was time and space. And she reflects that, you know, there are times she's writing this as somebody in her mid 40s that there's that temptation to think that, oh, it's too late. The best years of my life are gone. And then she thinks of her grandpa. She says for more than 90 years, he was still learning, still discovering, still changing and still opening his heart. His vitality and curiosity make me stand up, stretch, ask questions and learn. At a time in life when most people are winding down and settling into routines, Grandpa did the opposite. She goes on to say, if you think you're too old to make a difference, you're not. If you think you don't have enough time left to build something really beautiful, you're wrong. If you think your legacy leaving window has closed, it hasn't. She writes, it's not too late for you, and it's not too late for me. My grandpa was an unusual, opinionated, very tough man, and he began a life-altering journey right at the time when many people's lives are nearly over. There's still time. You can still grow into something beautiful. You can still leave something lasting and nourishing. It's never, ever too late to grow. I loved that chapter, and I love... Um, that that's part of our faith story, right? With the resurrection and God's upside down kingdom is that it is never too late. It's never too late for life to have joy and impact and peace and purpose. And even if the plans you had for your life when you were young may not have turned out the way you thought they would. I mean, to be honest, that is the case for many of us. There are very few of us that haven't had some type of detour and twist and turn and, you know, maybe even backtrack and have to start all over again along the way. Even if life lately has had way too many hard and chaotic and sad and stressful times, it's not too late. It's not too late. Not too late for new relationships, for new experiences, whether those are close to home just down the hall, or whether those are what feel like a world away. It's not too late. It's not too late for joy. It's not too late for second chances. It's not too late for peace and impact. So, in these days and weeks ahead, let the Spirit surprise you. Try something new, because it's never too late. It's never too late to use whatever it is that we have, Whatever circumstances and conditions we find ourselves in, whether those are long-lasting ones, whether they look completely different from what we've had before this, it's never too late. And in God's kingdom, it's never too little either. Never too late. So friends, wherever your soul is today, know that there are good things ahead, that there are surprises and newness in ways we can't imagine as we sit here today. And I will look forward to hearing what some of those are as the months ahead unfold. So take care, friends, and I'll see you again, some of you on Sunday, both um, online or in person, and then here again next week at, on Friday. So take care.